Mr. Braden West. Uh, hi, my name is Braden West, and uh, I've been having trouble improving my golf game. So I feel stuck at a certain level of performance, and I just can't improve. Like I've had the same scores, so I just I didn't really I couldn't figure out, man, what is it? Um, so I've narrowed it down to I think it's my routines and practice strategies aren't very effective, and I think it's time for a change. So some background. I played in two summer tournaments this summer, and I played in one that was in Marion and one that was in Danville. I placed second at the one in Marion, and I placed tied for ninth at the one in Danville. So I was, as you can, as you can probably think, I was a lot more happy with the first score. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I also play recreationally all the time with my dad, uh, my friends, with my uh, teammates, because I'm on the agency golf team. And uh, I have a passion for the game. Um, I have a constant strive to be better. Uh, so, as you can see, or as you could probably guess, like with, if I can't improve, it'd be a little frustrating that like my current routines aren't working. So the problem. Uh, here are the two scorecards from those two matches that I just talked about, those two tournaments. Um, what you want, really want to look at is these, it might be a little hard to see from back there, guys, but these two in scores here, you add them up. So this one was an 87. This one was an 83, I believe, yeah. So those scores, I'd like them to be in the 70s. That's what my goal is. Um, so. I'm not performing as well as I want to, and I feel that based off my greens hitting regulation and my fairways landed, that my scores should be lower than they are right now. Uh, the solution. I like to call it the solution schedule. Um, it is basically a strict schedule that starts on December 3rd and runs through February 22nd. It includes information from my sources and some advice from my experts. And it's basically just a Monday through Sunday schedule that I'll be implementing, like I said, on December 3rd up till February 22nd, which is like three day, three, two or three days before tryouts. So that's when it will be going. And I believe this will excel my golf game and allow me to find my rhythm, which is what professional golfers, once they find that rhythm, that's kind of just, they just ride that out. And uh, they are very successful, so. So yeah, every two weeks I will be recording my strokes lost and I will be adjusting the schedule based off that. So if certain things aren't working, I'll go back to my expert and say, hey, these things aren't working. Do you have anything else you can give me? And possibly finding some more sources and uh, implementing some different drills and routines. So why does my performance matter to me? It represents my school and that's ultimately what I want to do. I want to represent my school as best as I can, and in order to do that, I got to perform as well as I can to possibly get us to sectionals or state, so I can be on that varsity squad, and be a part of that team. Um, it also represents my work and effort. So that work that I put in off the course, I want to show that like that is like the effort that I put in there is affecting my uh, scores on the course. And lastly, lastly, my performance determines whether I play college golf, golf or not, and that's my end goal, is to be able to play college golf. That's, that's always been a goal of mine. I think it would be really cool to be on a part of a team like that and have that kind of chemistry. So, yeah. uh, Thank you so much, Sharks, for listening. I'd be happy to, happy to answer any questions and listen to any feedback. really good that you you know want to improve on your golf game and um, you know it's always good to want to strive to be better um, my question is kind of what's the difference between you know what have you been doing now to practice versus the changes you're gonna have to make that's a good question so the difference between what I'm going to do and what I've been doing now is th there's a lot of repetition in that schedule that I showed and there's a lot of it's very consistent as you saw throughout the week there was two days that I wasn't going to the and where I practice is the uh, Hamilton County Golf Center, which is an indoor, because most of like those months, that's all winter, so you can't really play outside because it's, it's snowing and sleeting and stuff. So, um, yeah, that, repeti that repetition and consistency is really what changed, because I feel that the more I practice, 
the better I will become. So right now I'm not practicing as much as I probably should be. So that's that's one of the main changes. So I thought, Brayton, that you did a really good job at presenting the background and making it important to you. Mm -hmm. One thing that I, perhaps I would suggest is um, to maybe add you know, some statistical or visual representation of the data you showed. So mm -hmm. the scorecard was um, interesting, but yeah. as somebody that doesn't really play a lot of golf, yeah. it doesn't speak to me, right, on what I think maybe one of the big outcomes was. And then the second thing, I love the idea of the solution schedule, but yeah. based on the way that you presented it, I had to read a lot. Yeah. So there were a lot of good things in there as I read that, and it's not that, but, so the, but the problem is, is that I didn't, wasn't able to focus on what you were saying um, versus okay. reading the bullet points. So as I, as I saw some of the bullets um, within what that repetition was, you know, maybe connect that to how you, you know, hypothesize or believe that it's going to, you know, improve the game, shave strokes, or, you know, however you represent that. So overall, um, really good. I think there's uh, sports tech businesses that I know from the IoT lab that have been started on less than where you are already. Yeah. So I would really encourage you to, to, to look it up research a bit more and pursue it. Yeah, good, thank good, you. Good stuff. You're a very confident speaker. You didn't really look at your cards. So I'm going to give you some bold feedback, but I don't think you need them. Yeah. And I think instead of needing them, will you go back to your solutions slide? Yeah. Instead of holding cards, why don't you hold a golf club and show us some of this? I know nothing about golf except that I'm really good at driving a golf cart. Yeah. And so if you could walk me through what are what is a short game? What are some of the things that you do? Why would you do yoga? How is how is that going to help <laughs> your game? I mean, yeah. I, I don't know if they know. Why would you condition? You're not running in golf. Like mm -hmm. these are things that I genuinely I'm not making the connections to. But I think you can take your your visual and bring it to life for your audience, and it will be far more engaging. Not to say that you weren't, because you were. Yeah. And but I think you're comfortable enough with your topic, and you've prepared enough for this presentation that you don't have to rely on those as a crutch. Bring in a golf club and show. I think okay. that'd be really cool. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for you that you want to continue to make yourself better and that you've made yourself a plan to follow with routines and something that you really want to stick to and that takes a lot in order, you know, a lot of, a lot to do that for anybody to make a schedule and stick to it. Which I have respect you for and maybe you could extend that to your teammates even. You know, you're talking about representing the school. I'm sure they feel the same way and that they would want to improve yeah. also. You could probably make some more friends, gain some respect from your peers that way also. But I think you, had a, you, you uh, did a, you presented yourself very well. Thank you. Yeah, just to piggyback off what Katie is saying, I, I love the idea that you're going to get better. Um, I want to know a big part of this would be like, then how can that impact other people? And is this something that maybe you do it this season, maybe get a couple of teammates on board with you, whatever, and you keep track of how it goes, and then you give it to Coach Young and say, hey, what if next season this becomes part of our regimen? I mean, you, know, you guys do a lot of off-season um, <laughs> beach body exercises. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe some of the skill work incorporated with that, right, could make a huge difference. And so I'd love to see you not only do it for your own game, right, but as a junior, I mean, you've got two years left on that the HSC team. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's something that, man, I do it first, come up with a success story, tweak it, right? Um, use your own feedback to make it stronger, bigger, better, whatever. And then next season, it just becomes part of what the team does. Um, and the neat thing about that, I think a lot of times, you, know, you guys are in high school for a limited time, right? Four years. And then, and then it's time to actually do your real life, right? And a lot of times what gets lost in that is the legacy that you may leave behind here. Because, because, and one of the things I love most about my job is that, that everybody I work with is on their way up to somewhere bigger and better, right? You guys are all um, like on that runway taking off with your life. And, uh, and that's really cool. There's so much hope and energy, right, that comes with that. Um, but let us not forget the legacies that we leave behind at every step, right? And my guess is, is when you were a young golfer on the, on the team, there were some older guys you thought were just super cool, right? Yeah. And you looked up to them, and they maybe didn't know it, mm -hmm. right? Because you but you just thought that they walked on water. And, and so the stuff that they did, right, you wanted to do. Maybe you find yourself doing that even unconsciously. And this could be, this could be that, because I, I will tell you, as, as a junior this year, there will be young guys on that team 
who think you are the coolest thing ever, right? And they want to model their game or even just their um, approach to being a royal, right? After you. Um, and I think, like in this project, it's you know for for people like Mackenzie and, and Katie who have done this project, and they get to come back and and see what that looks like, right? Um, I don't I don't know, like Katie, I have no idea if you have any idea the uh, the sort of impact that your mindfulness project has had on this place around here, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the things that you guys do here really do matter, and so taking a look at it from that angle and saying, what is it that I can leave in my wake that will that will leave him some South or HSE golf, or whatever it may be, right? Um, better than I found it, I think could be a really inspiring step for you. Because at some point, and golf is a lifelong game, but at some point, you're not gonna be playing golf competitively like you are now, um, and your body won't be able to do the things it can do now, all that sort of stuff, right? And so, um, when that time comes, I, I think it would be of, of great purpose to you to be able to, to kind of give back in that respect. Anything else for Aiden? Just a little bit of criticism. If my mom were here in the back, mm -hmm. she would not be able to see your golf schedule yeah. at all. At all. Honestly, it's even a little hard from here, right? Yeah. Um, although I can see it on my computer and I can tell it's some really interesting stuff, mm -hmm. right? So just presentation wise, and maybe when you go to present this to your coach or to your teammates, whatever, um, why don't you print out that schedule and hand everybody their own copy, yeah. right? And then as you talk about it, they can be making notes on you know, what this is, or this is interesting, or, or that sort of thing, right? Um, and I, this is so nitpicky. This is insanely nitpicky. But I don't love that it's clearly just a screenshot from a Word document where you can see <laughs> yeah. your cursor, mm -hmm. and the fact that it thinks probability is not a word, yeah. right? Which is offensive to me because ugh, it obviously is. <laughs> um, but they're just, they're little, there's little things, right? That, yeah. that to clean it up a little bit, it adds to your credibility, even though in, in the sensical world that's ridiculous, right? Okay. That has nothing to do with your credibility. But humans are not, as much as we want to be rational, logical characters, we're not. We're not, right? And so little things like that, they bug us, right? And we'll yeah. walk out of here going, did I like that kid? I don't know. I don't know if I liked him. And it will be because of something ridiculous like that, right? Yeah. So just short up a little bit. Okay. It's your own point. I like hearing you talk. Thank you should you. do it more in class. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Brayden.